Uh, my name is Jaya. Uh, my first question is that the, uh, the Purusha and Prakriti mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, is the Purusha the same as the pure consciousness that the first question of today referred to? And the second thing is that we never have an opportunity to interview somebody who can say, I am dead. Hmm. So when we say that I am changeless, uh, I am imperishable, how do I know? How do I know? Yes. All right, so two questions. Purusha Prakriti, when it's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, is it the same Purusha as pure consciousness, which we talk about in Vedanta? The answer is, straight answer is yes. Uh, remember, however, just a technical note, Purusha Prakriti is peculiarly the language of Sankhya, of Sankhya philosophy. So in Sankhya philosophy, Purusha is uh, the self. In, the, in Indian languages, Purusha is often is understood as a male. And Prakriti is female. It's not in that sense. Yeah. Purusha is the self. All of us, whether we have male or female bodies, we are Purusha in the sense of consciousness. Only in Sankhya, Purusha is multiple. Each of us is separately one Purusha, a separate consciousness. But in Gita, which is a Vedanta text, there's only one Purusha. That is the one consciousness, like the one sun in the sky which is reflected in all pots of water. So we are all that, all of us, all of us are that one consciousness, not part of it, just that one consciousness. Um, so yes, that's the meaning in the Bhagavad Gita. The second one is, we have never interviewed anybody who's dead. So how do we know that after death also I exist, I am, this imperishable, unchangeable I am? It's a good question. Think about it. Why we don't, if you really think about it, then you'll be startled. <coughs> See, I think I am. I have never had, when I said I am, that question should have come. Yes, you think I am, I am, all the time we are thinking that just because we are alive. But when we are dead, we will not, we won't have that I am will be gone. That I am is gone. So, it's not that, that I am is permanent. It's just when the body is alive, you feel you have the feeling of I am. That could be the question. Follow this carefully. In our own experience all the time, we have the experience of I am. All of us. Never have we ever had the experience of I am not. It's impossible. Even to have that, it's technically impossible. It's sort of literally, uh, in mathematicians will say, trivially imp impossible. Because to have an experience of I am not, experience means I am. Without an experience, how will you say anything? Now, notice we also have no experience, each of us, no experience of being dead. At least we don't remember. So we cannot say from our experience, when the body dies, I will not be. Nobody has that experience. Our thinking plays a trick on us. What we think is, yeah, yeah, I know all that. I have never, I don't really have an experience of being dead, but I see a lot of people who have died. I, have no, I know a lot of people have died and they don't exist anymore. They clearly cannot say I am. That's our feeling. And one day I too will die. So and then I am will disappear. That's what we think deep inside. But we are making a clear logical fallacy here. I am, I have this feeling internally. You are, none of you are aware of my I am, as I am not aware of your I am. I only infer that you are having the same I am feeling because based on my own internal experiences. Based on my own internal experiences, I feel I am, I am conscious, I have all these experiences. So to these people, they seem very similar to me. So they also must be having this kind of an experience. So I'm talking about the inner experience of each of you, which I infer. When the body dies, what happens? I can no longer see your behavior, I cannot hear your words. And I jump to the conclusion that inner experience must have ceased. But how do you know that? Till, I'll repeat that in another way. As long as we are alive, when we look at each other, we think of as each, each other as persons. Not literally this living body, but something in that living body, embodied in that living body, a person, a sentient being, a person just like me, is in everybody. 
So when I'm thinking about you, I'm thinking about the person, not about the living body itself. This is associated with that person. But when the body is dead, I jump to the conclusion that that person is also dead. But did I have an experience of the person dying? No. That person who died, that person is not available to interact with me anymore. And I have jumped to the conclusion that person must be dead. Where does this come from? It comes from a deep-rooted identification with the body. That I am de somehow I am just this body. That's what all religions, forget Vedanta, uh, all religions, uh, Judaism, Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Sang, uh, you know, uh, Sankhya, all the different Indian philosophies, Jainism, and all varieties of Hinduism, Taoism, all of us, all religions of the world throughout history have had one thing in common. You are not the body itself. Mm -hmm. You are something more than the physical body. That much is common to all religions. So, how do I know that I will exist? Ask yourself, why am I asking this question? If I say, um, I see this table. If the table is destroyed, how do I know that I'll exist? And say, what a silly question, Swami. Yeah. Table is an object. You are not this object. Its existence and destruction does not is, is no way connected to your existence and destruction. Equally, this body is an object. That's what Vedanta is trying to show you. Look at it. I mean, it's, it's literally nothing more than a complex biological object. Nothing else. How can it be you? That's, see, if we appreciate the hard problem of consciousness, not from a Vedantic perspective, just a pure consciousness studies perspective, just pure materialistic science perspective, how does consciousness come from a physical body? If we appreciate that question, will our uh, idea that the death of the body is the death of consciousness also will be shaken? That's a window. And this is connected to the question, how can science um, show that we are the self? This is how science is opening up windows. It cannot show you that you are pure consciousness, but it makes it more and more probable that what these ancient philosophies are saying um, could be true. <laughs>